Well, I appreciate you being here tonight. Thankful that God allowed us to be here. I'm thankful that my wife didn't get hurt any worse than what she did. Amen. She did Amen. break a bone in the top of her foot. And uh, it's the first broken bone she's ever had. I've had a few myself. <laughs> but uh, let's pray for us. She said it'd take about six weeks to heal up. So we, uh, I'm just thankful she didn't break her leg or her ankle and make worse. These things happen, and they happen to build character. Sometimes I wish the Lord would build it another way, but uh, uh, you can't question what the things that happen. But I just praise the Lord for you folks being here. And about me preaching longer. That's the first time I've ever heard anybody say that, I think. <laughs> but Lord willing, we'll be heading back home to North Carolina tomorrow. It should be a lot easier because it's all downhill. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we just thank the Lord for you being here. I don't, I, I, folks. I'm serious. I'm not trying to just be, you know, give you flattery. But I, I don't take for granted people that come out to the house of the Lord. And I know it's not to honor me. It's to honor the Lord, and that's the way it should be. But it is an honor to me for you to be here. And I thank the Lord for every one of you. This, uh, what God has done in this church and is going to do. We are just so thankful and grateful. Now, we've had a good time this week. I've had a good time preaching. We've preached along a lot of different subjects. We've dealt with consecration. We've dealt with uh, even some of our Baptist heritage. We've dealt with our Christian walk. We've dealt with uh, unity in the church. Uh, we've dealt with, of course, salvation of the soul. We've been in the Old Testament, the New Testament. And what I'm gonna to preach tonight a little hesitant about preaching it. The Lord gave this to me about two years ago. Let me say I have never in 38 years of salvation, reading the Bible through nearly two dozen times, I have never heard anybody comment on this or preach on this before two years ago. 35 years of preaching. I've never seen it in the scripture until two years ago. So immediately you're thinking this is a heresy. <laughs> and it might be. But... In case you think that God lost control of things with our election, that's dead wrong. Yes. That song they sung the first one tonight, He is the King of Kings. Yes, He is. He is. Even He's not crowned yet, but he, when He comes, He comes with many crowns. Amen. And Amen. praise the Lord, folks, He's going to run things and He's going to rule things when He comes. Amen. All the false religions are going to be put down. Amen. And uh, folks, what is going to happen, we're going to see in the scripture tonight. Now, uh, I want you to go along with me. The, the messages this week have been just fairly simple, outline messages. But tonight's going to be just a little bit different. And uh, like I can say I was hesitant about preaching this because this might be construed as a Bible conference message rather than a revival message, but I think we need to see it. To show how our God is still in control Amen. and what He's going to do. Amen. Folks, listen. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You know that statement there gets you killed in some countries? Yeah. It may get you killed in this country in the next four years. But folks, that's the truth. No man comes unto the Father except by Him. And then, no question, John 14, 6. He said it himself. If Jesus Christ is not Jehovah God manifest in flesh, he's the biggest hypocrite that ever walked on two feet. Yes, sir. Amen. He allowed people to bow down and worship him after saying, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Yes, Amen. I believe that. Now, promise me tonight that you won't judge what I'm going to preach till I get done, okay? <laughs> Don't start shaking your head or get up and walk out. <laughs> Because what I'm preaching is in the book. Amen. You're looking at a man that will not, will not, as long as I'm in my right mind, ever change one word in this Bible. Amen. Neither do I have to go to Hebrew and Greek to explain it. Amen. Amen. If I believe this Bible is perfect, and I do, then I believe this Bible is perfectly translated just like God gave it. And folks, if you know anything about the King James Bible translators, you know that they translated according to the context rule. Yes. 
No, all words were not uniform, and they get accused of that many, many times of not translating the same Greek word the same way. That's because it does supposed to be translated Amen. the same way. It's yeah. context. Yes. Context. Yes. Context. Yes. Same thing in the Old Testament with the Masoretic Hebrew. And we're going to look at something that I hope will be a blessing to you, especially for the young people, but this is a blessing to me. And so wait till I get done before you judge what I'm preaching. Amen. Yes. Amen. You promised it. Everybody promised. All right. Well, give me one of these. Now. All right. All right. First Kings chapter nine. First Kings chapter nine. You'll say, Brother Mitch, you are ready for the white coats to come pick you up. We got a magnificent book here, folks. We got a marvelous book, and there's things in it, things we do every day we don't even realize. It comes right straight from this Bible. Amen. Amen. Right. Right. And we're going to see that tonight. Look at 1 Kings chapter 9, verse 1. The Bible says in 1 Kings, everybody there? And we're going to go to a lot of scripture tonight. You, you want me to preach longer, it might get. <laughs> I know I've been sort of short preaching. I know these folks have to drive two hours to get here. I'm conscious of that. I know kids have to get up and go to school the next day. I'm conscious of that. But tonight's going to be very important. I want you to see this. Amen. 1 Kings chapter 9, verse 1. It came to pass when Solomon had finished the building of the house of the Lord and the king's house and all Solomon's desire which he was pleased to do that the Lord appeared to Solomon the second time as he had appeared unto him at Gibeon. And the Lord said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and thy supplication that thou hast made before me. I have hallowed this house which thou hast built to put my name there forever. And mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. And if thou wilt walk before me as David thy father walked in integrity of heart and in uprightness to do according to all that I have commanded thee and will keep my statutes and my judgments, then I will establish the throne of thy kingdom upon Israel forever. As I promised to David thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee a man upon the throne of Israel. But... There's that conjunction, but an if is a condition. But if ye shall at, at all turn from following me, ye or your children, and will not keep my commandments and my statutes which I have set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them, then will I cut off Israel out of the land which I have given them, and this house which I have hallowed for my name. Will I cast out of my sight, and Israel shall be a proverb and a byword among all people. And at this house which is high, every one that passeth by it shall be astonished, and shall hiss, and they shall say, Why hath the Lord done this unto this land and to this house? And they shall answer, Because they forsook the Lord their God, who brought forth their fathers out of the land of Egypt and have taken hold upon other gods, and have worshipped them, and served them. Therefore hath the Lord brought upon them all this evil. Now folks, this is the first place in your Bible where you find a reference to the word hiss. Hiss. H-I-S-S. Remember that. Look over in Job chapter number 6. Job chapter number 6. In Job chapter number 6, the Bible says this. Uh, excuse me, I, I'm wrong. 27, Job 27, verse 6. In Job 27, verse 6. First mistake I've made all week. <laughs> you believe that, don't you? <laughs> you just don't know it. <laughs> My righteousness I hold fast and will not let it go. My heart shall not reproach me so long as I live. Who does that sound like? Folks, do you know in your Bible that Israel, uh, Job, is the most perfect type of Israel during the tribulation period? Jeremiah is the second type. But look at this. His, they're they're self-righteous. That was Job's problem. That's Israel's problem today. They have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge, the Bible said in Romans 10. Now look, let mine enemy be as the wicked, and he that rises up against me as the unrighteous. For what is the hope of the hypocrite, though he hath gained, when God taketh away his soul? Will God hear his cry when trouble cometh upon him? Will he delight himself in the Almighty? Will he always call upon God? I will teach you by the hand of God that which is the Almighty and will not conceal. Behold, all ye yourselves have seen it. Why then are ye thus altogether vain? 
This is the portion of a wicked man with God and the heritage of the of oppressors, which they shall receive of the Almighty. If his children be multiplied, it is for the sword, and his offspring shall not be satisfied with bread. Look at that. Those that remain of him shall be buried in death, and his widows shall not weep. Though he heap up silver as the dust, and prepare raiment as the clay. Does that remind you of something? That's James chapter 5. Glory to you rich men. That's a tribulation application. James chapter 5. This is Israel in the tribulation. He may prepare it, but the just shall put it on, and the innocent shall divide the silver. He buildeth his house as a moth, and as a booth that the keeper maketh. The rich man shall lie down, but he shall not be gathered. He openeth his eyes, and he is not. Terrors take hold on him as waters. A tempest stealeth him away in the night. The east wind carrieth him away, and he departeth as a storm hurleth him out of his place. Now look at these next two verses carefully. For God shall cast upon him and not spare. He would fain flee out of his hand. Men shall clap their hands at him and shall hiss him and shall hiss him out of his place. You see that? Let's pray. Father, give us wisdom now as we look to your word. We're thankful and grateful, God, for your mercy and grace. We're thankful, Lord Jesus, for everything you've done for us. Open our eyes and hearts of understanding tonight. And help us to get the message in this message. And we'll thank you and praise you in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Now folks, if you study your Bible and look at these two passages here. And you begin to look up this word hiss. And you look up the word, the definition for the word hiss. It will say this in Webster's 1828 Dictionary. And also, uh, believe it or not, in Strong's Concordance. I don't use the strong concordance. I don't use the Hebrew or the Greek dictionary for the sole purpose, of sole reason, that uh, William Jacinius was the man responsible for the Hebrew uh, lexicon and your strong concordance. And Jacinius was a German rationalist, didn't believe any of the doctrines of the Bible. He was a lost man. By the same token, in your strong concordance, your Greek definitions, most of them were put there by G.B. Weiner or uh, Joseph Henry Thayer. Joseph Henry Thayer was a Unitarian. He did not believe in the deity of Christ. He did not believe in the blood atonement. He did not believe in the virgin birth. He did not believe in the inspiration of the scriptures. Same thing with Weiner. Why would I want to go to a lost man to get a definition from the Bible? He said, well, Brother Mitch, what do you do? I go scripture with scripture. That's what we're going to do tonight. But even at that, if you look at the word hiss in the dictionary, it'll tell you this. It'll say, to blow air across the tongue through the teeth, through the lips, out of the air. Amen? Yeah. That's the definition for hiss. Or hiss. Like a snake. Amen? But you know something interesting? That's the same definition for the word whistle. Only whistle's not in the English language in 1611. Amen? You say, now wait a minute, Brother Mitt, though. No, this just, just follow along with me now. If you study the word hiss in these contexts we're going to use tonight, you're going to see in these contexts that God, and when this happens, it's called an anthropomorphism or an anthropomorphic expression. When God shows a human attribute, or the, when God gets angry, or when God laughs, or when God is jealous, that's a human attribute put in us humans that we got from God. Amen. When God displays that in the scripture, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. When God does this thing and, and displays human attributes, we find it right here in the scripture. Yeah. Hang on to your hat now. All right? Unless you think I've, I'm crippled too high for crutches, you just wait <laughs> and just, and just listen. Now, remember over in our text over there where it says, they shall look upon Israel and they shall hiss and say... Why has God done this? If any of you ever come upon an accident or a car wreck or some devastation in a storm and you go, what in the world happened here? Yeah. Mm. Why do you do that? Why do you whistle? I've done it all my life and didn't know why. Amen? What about over there in Job where he said, men shall hiss them out of their place? What do you do when you get chickens out of the corner? 
You go, right? I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. I want you to notice, folks, the name of the message tonight is when God whistles. Are you ready for this? Yes, sir. It's right here in the scripture, folks. Turn to Isaiah chapter number five. Isaiah chapter we've got three short points tonight. But when you go out of here, you're going to say for sure, Brother Mitch is a heretic first class. But you read along with me. You believe your Bible, folks, tonight? Yes, you believe every word of it? Amen. All right. <laughs> Look at Isaiah chapter 5. And I want you to notice, folks, tonight, when God whistles, nations shall come running swiftly. Amen. Look at Isaiah chapter number 5, verse 20. Woe to them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light, light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet, sweet for bitter. Woe to them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe to them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Therefore is the fire devoureth the stubble and flame consumeth the shaft. So their root shall be as rottenness and their blossom shall go up as dust because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts and despise the word of the Holy One of Israel. Therefore is the anger of the Lord kindled against His people. See it? And He has stretched forth His hand against them and has smitten them. And the hills did tremble and their carcasses were torn in the midst of the streets. For all this His anger is not turned away but His hand is stretched out still. Look at this. He said He will lift up an ensign to the nations from far and will hiss unto them from the end of the earth, and behold, they shall come with speed swiftly. None shall be weary nor stumble among them. None shall slumber nor sleep. Neither shall the girdle of their loins be loosed, nor the latch of their shoes be broken, whose arrows are sharp, and all their bows bent. Their horses whom shall be counted like flint, and their wheels shall like a whirlwind. Their roaring shall be like a lion. They shall roar like young lions. They shall roar and lay hold of the prey and shall carry it away safe and none shall deliver it. And in that day they shall roar against them like the roaring of the sea. And if one look unto the land, behold darkness and sorrow and the light is darkened in the heavens thereof. Folks, if you know your Bible, you know that's the second advent context right there. Amen. And folks, listen to me. Because of God's people that have gone away from God, God is going to call. He's going to whistle for the Gentile nations. What else would you do to a bunch of Gentile dogs? Amen. He whistles to the nations. And they'll come running swiftly. And when they come running into the land of Palestine, they're going to clean Israel's plow. Then God's going to clean their plow. Amen. Amen. He said, I'll hiss unto them and they shall come with speed swiftly. Now folks, don't tell me God's going to go... God's going to whistle, and I wish I could. I can't. I can do it. But that's all I can do. Amen. I wish I could whistle the other way and greatly enhance this message. <laughs> but folks, in all the years of studying the Bible, I've never seen this before. We're not done yet. Amen. Look at this. Take your Bible, look in Joel chapter 3. You say, Brother Mitch, I don't know about that. Well, look in Joel chapter 3. Nations shall come running swiftly. In Joel 3, the Bible says this. In verse number 3, chapter number 3, excuse me, Joel 3, 1. For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. What does Jehoshaphat mean? It means the judgment of Jehovah. That's what the name means. Look at it. And will plead with them for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. Look at down to verse 9. Proclaim you this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen. See there? That's Gentile. Folks, you know that's what the word Gentile means? It means heathen. That's what you and I sitting in here tonight were before God saved us. We were heathen Gentile dogs. Amen. Amen. You say, Mother Bitch, you, you calling me a dog? No, I'm calling myself a dog. Amen. 
I know what the Bible says over in Matthew 15. Jesus said it's not me to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. And that poor old Gentile woman who was a Syrophoenician, she said, True the Lord, yet the dogs eat from the crumbs that fall from their master's table. She said, Yes, Lord, I'm a dog, but I'm your dog. And so am I. That don't bother me one bit that the Lord called me a dog before I was saved. I just go woof. <laughs> Translated out of the original canine, that means praise the Lord, I'm glad I got in. Amen. 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 And I am. Yes, that don't bother me a bit. I know my place. I know I'm not a Jew. I know God's dealt with the Gentiles and grafted us in and praise the Lord He has. Amen. But folks, listen to me. He's going to graft that Jew in again. Romans yeah. 11. Yeah. Amen. 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 But if you don't believe in the restoration of Israel, you don't believe 85% of your Old Testament, Amen. you might as well rip it out and throw it away. And that's what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Folks, that's what covenant theology is and replacement yeah. theology. Amen. That's all that mess is today is doing away with Israel, taking their circumcision, using infant baptism in place of that, and saying we're now God's chosen people. You're out of your mind. Amen. That's right. Amen. You're out of your mind that God cast away His people. God forbid! Amen. That's right. Can I stop right here just a second and tell you where to get this garbage from? Amen. You have a translation of the Bible. It's really a paraphrase called the Amplified Translation. In 1 Thessalonians 2.16 in the Amplified Translation well, your Bible says Israel's sin has come up against them to the uttermost. That thing says that God has cast away Israel finally and forever. Wow. That thing came along in 1958 and 1964. And that's just about the time covenant theology and replacement theology started coming into America. Well, actually in Europe and in America is that the church has replaced Israel. All the promises given to Israel are now given to the church. You know, every cult in the world believes that. Yeah. That's what makes them a cult. That's right. If you believe it, you're a Baptist cult. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe it. That's why they're recommending the Geneva Bible now instead of the King James Bible because the Geneva Bible had 14 Calvinistic footnotes in that expressed the fact that God had done away with Israel yeah. and now the church has taken their place. Baloney. Baloney. B-O-L-O-G-N-A. Baloney. All right, listen to this. He said, Brother Mitch, I, I, I'm not sure about this. Well, look at here. He says, Assemble yourselves and come all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about, thither cause thy mighty ones to come down. Let the heathen be wakened, and come down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there will I set to judge all the heathen round about. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down, for the press is full. The fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Folks, you Bible students know that's the second advent right there. The same context over in Isaiah 5. Look at this. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened and the stars shall withdraw their shining. The Lord also, look at it, Amen. shall roar out of Zion. They come roaring against Israel. God roars against them. Amen. And when He roars, His roars a lot louder than theirs is. Amen. Amen. That's right. Lord also roar out of Zion, utter His voice from Jerusalem. The heaven and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of His people and the strength of the children of Israel. Brother, you got me excited tonight singing that song. I'm going to tell you. I said, I'm right on the night. I know that. Look at Zechariah 14. You said, I'm not convinced yet. Oh, we've just gotten started, folks. This is King James Bible. Amen. King James Bible. Zechariah 14, verse 1. Behold, the day of the Lord. Every Bible student knows that's the second advent. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoils shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished, and half the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then, then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. They come up against Israel. God whistles, brings them up to Israel. And when he does, God deals with them there. And folks, you got cream of wheat for solid in the valley of Jezreel. Amen. The plains of Megiddo, Esdraelon. you got blood to the horses, brother. Amen. 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 Folks, listen to me. Are you ready for this? Amen. Here's 
Here's the nation of Israel. They're backed against the wall. They don't know what to do. Their heart, I mean, they, they, they say these nations, they're, they're, they outnumber us. We, we can't do anything. But about that time, folks, the heavens open. Yes, amen. And here comes the king of kings yes, amen. riding on a white stallion, and we're following him. Yes. Clothed in white raiment. Amen. What a day. Amen. And the Bible said, out of his mouth goes a sharp two edged sword. And folks, when he does, they disintegrate to a pool of blood. Yes. Amen. Here's Israel. They're backed up against the mountains. They're saying, oh God, who is this? Who is this? We're next. We're next. Who is this? We don't know this man. Who is this with all this power and his word? And all of a sudden, hey. Jesus Christ raises those hands. Yeah. And they sue his this one with these scars, his wounds in his hands and his back. Yes. Amen. Just like Joseph in Genesis chapter 45 Amen. said, It's me, Joseph. Right. Jesus Christ looks at the remnant of Israel there and he says, It's me, Jesus Christ. And the blinders fall from their eyes and they go, Oh God. Oh God, we crucified our Messiah. It's right. Jesus Christ. Amen. He's the King of kings yeah. and the Lord of lords. Amen. Amen. And just like Joseph's brethren were troubled at his presence, yeah. they'll be troubled at the presence of Jesus Christ because the first thing they'll think he's going to destroy us just like Joseph's brethren. Then they see those eyes of compassion and love. He says, come unto me. Hey. Just like Joseph did to his brethren. Come, come unto me. Hey. And folks, listen. To go into the millennial reign. Amen. We're with him. They might try to attack us, but they don't hurt us. You can't hurt a glorified mom. You say, the Lord won't let us fight. We don't have to fight. We're a bride, pure and white. Folks, we don't have to fight. The Lord does all the fight. Amen. The Bible's what the Bible says. He said, I'll fight against those nations as when he fought the day of battle. They don't stand a chance. They, right. they hate God. These nations of the tribulation hate God. They hate the thought of God. He's going to destroy them. God's going to gather all nations and He's going to judge them. Number two, folks, listen to this. Go back to Isaiah chapter number 7. Isaiah 7. And I want you to notice. You know what your Bible says? Your Bible says in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 3 that the ox knoweth his owner and the ass his master's crib. But the Bible says Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. You know the only creature that God has trouble with is you and I, human beings. He don't have a bit of trouble with any animal that He made. I mean, He, he directs the animals and they come just whenever God tells them to come. I mean, folks, listen, we know that's in the Bible. We know that happened in the Old Testament. We know that God sent hornets into the land to drive the Canaanites out of the land. We know that. We know that. We, but, 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 but I want you to see, uh, I want you to see uh, Isaiah 7, verse 19. And look at this. The Lord shall bring upon thee and upon thy people and upon thy father's house days that have not come from the day that Ephraim departed from Judah, even the king of Assyria. That's the revolt under Rehoboam, if you remember, over there in the, the book of uh, 1 Kings 12. In 746 B.C. It's when the ten northern tribes went into captivity. But notice it says, And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall hiss for the fly that is in the uttermost part of the rivers of Egypt, and for the bee that is in the land of Assyria, then they shall come and shall rest all of them in the desolate valleys, and in the holes of the rocks, and upon all thorns, and upon all bushes. There is that God hissing again. Now does God look at those bees and say, Psh. no, He whistles for them. And He says, come, and they come obediently. And they come into the land. This has happened before, amen. Take your Bible and look in, in, in Psalm. Look in Psalm 78. Psalm 78. Back in Exodus chapter 8, we won't read it tonight for sake of time. You can write it down. Exodus 8, 20 to 23. He said he called for the fly to come. In Psalm 78, here's a passage of Scripture. In Psalm 78, the Bible says in verse 40, how oft did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They remembered not his hand on the day when he delivered them from the enemy. How he hath wrought his signs in Egypt and his wonders in the fields of Zoan, and turned their rivers into blood and their flood that they could not drink. Look at this, verse 45. 
He set divers sorts of flies among them, which devoured them, and frogs which destroyed them. Folks, if, uh, when I was a kid down south, we'd go swimming out in the farm pond or wherever, even at, over at the wreck park, and these great big old horse flies about this big, looked like B-52 bombers, and things would come and land on your back, and you wouldn't feel them until it was too late, and they would bite you till the blood would run down your back. Right. Amen? You have to go under the water to get away from them. Now look at this. This Bible said diverse sorts of flies. That means all different kinds of flies. Amen? Could you imagine? Well, you can get away from one, but what about billions? Right. Folks, listen, we don't think about what happened down there in Egypt. This Bible right here says that those flies and frogs devoured them. Right. They ate them. No wonder they prayed to Moses to get the curse of God off of them. Right. Right? They devoured them. God called for them and they came. And when he told them to leave, they left. Over here in Isaiah 7, day of judgment, he's going to whistle for them and they're going to come flying. They're going to do exactly what God told them to do. Amen. Folks, listen. He told them that in Exodus 8. He foretold that 40 years earlier in Deuteronomy 7. And then in Joshua chapter 24, after the fact, he recounted it. Look at Exodus. Look at Exodus chapter 23. Exodus chapter 23. God said, I will hiss for the fly. I will hiss for the fly. And he'll come, they'll come, they'll come run, they'll come flying. Exodus chapter 23. In Exodus chapter 23, verse number 28. The Bible said, I will send hornets before thee, which shall drive out the Hivite, the Canaanite, and the Hittite from before thee. Why did God do that? So the land wouldn't be overtaken by a beast. He called them there to drive them out a little bit at a time. So prepared it for the nation of Israel. Folks, listen. Listen. That's what God's going to do. Now, in case you don't think the first two are that we got the right application, thank God God always has some good news. Amen. Turn to Zechariah. Not only do nations come running swiftly, not only does the creature respond to the creator obediently. That's our second point. I may have forgot to say that. The creature responds to the Creator obediently. Like I said, we humans are the one that question God. But number three, I want you to notice in Zechariah, and I want you to notice that the redeemed, the redeemed are gathered abundantly. Look in Zechariah chapter 10. Zechariah chapter number 10, beginning with verse number 6. And I will strengthen the house of Judah and will save the house of Joseph. And I will bring them again to place them, for I have mercy upon them, and they shall be as though I had not cast them off. For I am the Lord their God, and will hear them. That's the millennial reign, folks, right there. Now look at this. And they of Ephraim shall be like a mighty man, and their hearts shall rejoice as through wine. Yea, their children shall see it, and be glad. Their hearts shall rejoice in the Lord. Now here's our Lord and God. Look what he says in verse 8. I will hiss for them, and gather them, for I have redeemed them. And they shall increase as they have increased. Folks, God's not going to look at these saved Jews and Gentiles. He's not going to look at them and go, <coughs> He's just going to whistle for us and we're going to come. Amen. Now look at this. Take your Bible look at Isaiah chapter 51. Isaiah chapter 51. Verse number 10. The Bible says in Isaiah 51, 10, Art thou not it which hath dried the sea, the waters of the great deep, that hath made the depths of the sea a way for the ransom to pass over? Well, you know, that's got two meanings there. You know, that's, that's Moses taking the children of Israel across the Red Sea, but that's when we go out of here through the great deep. God's going to draw it back and let us go through. Right. Therefore, the redeemed of the Lord shall return. Amen. And come with singing unto Zion, and everlasting joy shall be upon their head. They shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. That's where the roll-off home get that song from. Amen. Right out of the scripture. Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return. How about that, folks? Gladness and joy when the redeemed of the Lord return unto Zion. And it's not, and it, folks, it's not going to be for judgment. It's going to be, praise God, it's going to be for joy. Amen. Look at Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55. In verse number 3. Isaiah 55, 3. 
The Bible says, Incline your ear and come unto me. Here your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Folks, aren't you glad of that? You know what the sure mercies of David is? David ought to die. For what he did, he should have been dead. I mean, he committed adultery, he got a man drunk, and he had a man killed. It's the same as if he would have pulled the arrow on him and killed him himself. Uriah the Hittite. And then he married his wife after the man was dead. Both David committed uh, capital uh, offenses that should have he should have been stoned. But God had mercy upon him. You say, why? Because Jesus Christ came through him. That's why. Yeah. Amen. You know, some, one time I, I thought, I said, Lord, you got a lot of renegades in your genealogy. <laughs> I said, why is that? And the Lord said, because I can use who I want to use. Amen. And that's exactly what he did. Exactly. He used Ruth, a Moabitess. To bring the seed of the Lord Jesus Christ through. Of course, it came through Mary. It didn't come through Joseph. Amen. Yeah. But folks, still, Mary was Judah all the way back to Adam. And folks, listen. If, if, if Jesus Christ would have been born of Joseph, he could have never been king of kings and lord of lords. Because Joseph's line was cut off at Jeconiah. It says, O earth, 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 hear the word of the Lord. Let God this man childless. Let, let no man of his seed reign anymore on the throne of Jerusalem. God cut Joseph's line off at Jeconiah, but not Mary's. You say, why, Brother Mitch? He was virgin born. Amen. Do you believe that, don't you? Amen. I hope so. But look at this. God's given us the sure mercies of David. For the things I've done, I should be dead. But thank God for the mercy of Jesus Christ. Look at this. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and a commander to the people. Behold, Thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew thee not shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God and for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. Folks, this run brings deliverance, not destruction. Amen. That run back over there coming swiftly in Isaiah 5 brings destruction. This run, thank God, brings deliverance. Amen. Amen. God's going to hiss for us, and we're going to come running. <laughs> now listen, in conclusion, you take this home and chew on it for a while. But can you imagine what sound of sound it's going to make when God whistles? We find in our Bible that when God speaks, uh, that He's got the voice like the sound of many waters. I got to thinking about that one time. I got to thinking, well, why is that? Maybe it's because it comes through water. You ever thought about that? You've got the first and second heaven. You've got a body of water that surrounds it. Then you've got the third heaven. God dwells above the third heaven. Could you imagine what would happen if his voice wasn't muffled? <laughs> I mean, what's it going to sound like when God whistles? Well, it's going to be loud enough for all the nations of the earth to come running to bring judgment on Jerusalem. Folks, not only that, listen. The Bible said in Revelation 1.15, he sounded many waters, like the voice of a multitude in Daniel 10, verse 6. And as thunder in John 12, 29, Revelation 14, 2. That's a pretty good sound. What's it going to sound like if God whistles? It's going to be pretty loud, isn't it? Now, folks, you take that home and look at the context. In your context, your King James Bible, you will find there's times when they do hiss. But you also find there's times when that word hiss used like I said, Webster's 1828 Dictionary, one of the definitions for hissingly is to make a whistling sound. But folks, I don't have to go to Webster's. i got it right here in the Scripture. Amen. Either God's going to whistle or God's going to hiss like a snake. So you choose which one. Amen? Heretic for sure, right? Okay, let's pray. <laughs> Father, we thank you for this day and many blessings you've given us. We pray now you'll take this Bible study and God will think upon these things and meditate upon them. We pray that your blessed will be done. Lead God and direct us in everything that we do. We'll praise you for it. If there's anyone here tonight, God, that's lost, Father, they want to be under the judgment of this God. This God that can be heard all over this whole universe. <laughs> And Father, I'm glad I'm on the winning side tonight. I'm glad, Lord Jesus, that I've trusted you as my Savior. I'm glad, Father, that you're going to deliver us all here one of these days very soon. We can have our hope in thee. We can rest in thee. <coughs> and we'll love you and thank you for all you do. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, and for his sake,
Amen. 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 Thank you, folks, for having us this week. Pray for us in the days and weeks ahead. And uh, we just praise the Lord for everything that He's done. And I hope we've preached some, something this week that's been a help and a blessing to you and a challenge to you. That's our intent. And you pray for us in the ministry. And we'll pray for you, okay? Pray for your pastor. Pray for his dear wife. They'll be attacked by the devil always. And uh, that's, that's the normal thing. And folks, we're not going to get out of here without getting some bumps and bruises and some skins and maybe even worse than that. I don't know. But I know this. I know who's in control. Amen. And like I said last night, our, our Baptist ancestors, they didn't quit. They didn't deny the faith. They didn't throw the book out. When things got rough, they stood the test and have given us the heritage we've got tonight. And Country Chapel Baptist Church is here because somebody refused to bend and bow. But you know something? Many of them burned. Yeah. And they burned. Many of our ancestors burned because they would not admit that Rome was correct on sprinkling babies. Right. And they refused, they refused to recant, and they paid for it with their life. Amen. You ever stop to think about what Baptists are giving up today? They get rid of the book at just a drop of a hat for a little money. Right. It's going to be a tough time at the judgment, either at the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment, wherever they stand. Me, I know where I'm going, the judgment seat of Christ. I'm not looking forward to that. But I am looking forward to what comes after. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Pray for us. Yeah. Amen, Pastor. Yeah. That's a blessing. He answered some questions. Yeah. Mine, at least. Yeah. I've been a few times I've read through the Bible and I said, What the world's this? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. whistling. Yeah. Let's stand. We have a song of invitation. The Lord spoke to you tonight. About anything. Amen. The Lord can speak to you about things that preachers are not even preaching about.